Hi, welcome to Mr. Dyer's Musings. This is Mr. Dyer, and today we're going to make groundhog stew. As always, I'd like to thank my wife and family for their unconditional support. I'd like to thank my students for always pushing me to be better. Uh, right now, I'd like to thank my son who's in the kitchen with me, who normally doesn't like to cook, but he's here with me today. He's going to be helping me out. I also like to thank my viewers and subscribers because without you guys, this channel wouldn't exist. And I sincerely appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I'd also like to thank my patrons on Patreon um, that really appreciate the contributions that you guys make so we can expand our videos and make them a little bit uh, more diversified. Um, so today we are going to make groundhog stew. So if you watched one of my previous videos, you saw me take the groundhog and I quartered it up and I uh, fried that for my family for dinner that night. Well, we still have the back section that's left over and we're going to turn that into a stew because it's a lot easier to braise the groundhog, make it nice and soft and everything, um, and tear apart the meat instead of trying to fry it up and then tear it apart and put it in a stew. So. Right now, we do have our groundhog that was soaking in a salt water. Um, my wife, who <laughs> has a more sensitive nose and palate than I do, said that uh, the fried groundhog still tasted a little gamey. So to get rid of some of the gamey taste, I put uh, in a pot of water covering the groundhog, and I put about a half a cup of salt in with it. And you mix it all up and you make like a brine solution. And that salt water supposedly helps draw out the gamey taste. So we're hoping that that's what it's going to be for. Another nice thing, since it's a soup, there's going to be a lot of flavors that's inside of it. So you don't have to worry about the gamey flavors as much anyways, because it's most likely going to be masked with all the different herbs and the vegetables that we're going to put into it. Go ahead. Okay, Kaya, what are we doing here on the stove? We're heating up the oil so we can take the groundhog and brown it for about two minutes and then we're going to transfer it to the cooking pot. Are we only worried about one side? No, we're worried about two. Both sides? So we need yeah. to brown one side, flip it over, and brown the other side? Yeah. Okay. Now, it looks like the skillet over here that we're using is starting to smoke a little bit. So that's a good sign that our oil is hot enough to sear the meat pretty well and what that's going to do is that's going to lock in the juices and then when we transfer it over to the pot and we braise it and we cook slow and low over a long period of time that'll help break down the fibers in the meat and it'll make a really tender potted uh, stew. We have our groundhog out of the water and we've rinsed it off with cold water. Now we're going to get ready to put some salt and pepper on it. And we're going to coat it on both sides with that salt and pepper before we stick it in the frying pan. We've added the salt and pepper liberally on the top and on the inside. I personally prefer kosher salt and fresh cracked black pepper, but the choice is completely up to you and what you have in your kitchen. So now we're going to apply it to the frying pan. The groundhog is in the skillet. It's frying as you can hear starting to smell pretty good and you're not going to keep it in the frying pan for very long all you're really doing is just browning it on both sides so it takes about two to three minutes on each side as long as your skillet is good and hot you want to make sure your oil is hot really well before you put the meat in otherwise it doesn't uh, sear the meat like it should one of my favorite things about stews is you can put just about any type of vegetable that you want in and just about any type of seasoning that suits your fla flavor the Four main things that I like to put in my stews is onion, garlic, celery, and carrots. You can also put things in like potatoes and other flavorful vegetables that you like. Okay, so with the garlic, what you want to do is you want to take that skin off. There's a few ways you can do that. You can put it in the frying pan, heat it up, and get it soft and it squishes down. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to take the flat of my knife, I'm going to put it on the garlic and my palm. You hear that cracking noise? All you have to do is then peel off the garlic, comes off real easy. My son already took that one off, so now we're just going to mince it up. And as, if you didn't catch that, that was two cloves of garlic.
The vegetables, I always take a whole onion and I chop it up and I try to chop it up fine. Some people like it coarse. I have three children and some of them just don't like the sight of onion. So the finer it is, it tends to blend well with the soup. The carrots, I also went ahead and chopped up. Now the carrots will take a little bit longer in the soup to cook. So that's why those are the two vegetables that I chopped up. Um, the onions are going to go into the frying pan and they're going to get translucent and then they'll be added to the pot from the frying pan and I will take it from there. As you can see our onions are becoming nice and golden and translucent and they're almost ready to be put thrown into the pot. And after they get thrown in the pot I'm going to put the garlic in on in the frying pan for just a few seconds, um, get it warmed up and heated up. Well, that way it gets nice and soft before I put it in the pot. The garlic was thrown in the frying pan and it didn't, didn't take very long, like about a minute or two, and it's already browning, so it's ready to go into the pot with the onions and the groundhog. This is not in a period recipe or anything for the American Civil War, as far as I know, but I do like to cook with beer, and I'm going to use this, uh, I have an allergy to alcohol, so I can't drink alcohol anymore. So I'm going to use this non-alcoholic beer, and it's a very similar to an IPA. So we'll add a little bit of a citrus to the stew. My son is pouring in the non-alcoholic beer. You can use beer, regular beer if that's your thing. And uh, what that's going to do is that's going to deglaze the bottom of the skillet. Of course, if you're using regular beer, then this would burn off some of the alcohol content that would be in it. And you take your spatula, you scrape up any of the bits that might be in the bottom of it. Some people like to use a white wine for this kind of stew, but I'm a beer guy. Okay, so that's ready to be poured into the pot. Got my pot handle here. Pour it directly over that. And now we're going to have about two cups of chicken stock. And if you don't have chicken stock, something that you can use is like a, a bouillon substitute. I like to use this one. Um, I use this one quite a bit when I don't have chicken stock, and it adds a really good chicken flavor to it. We have the pot at a, uh, a regular boil. We're going to lower the heat down to get it down to a, a regular simmer. That way we cook it low and slow for a couple hours. We went ahead and we put in a few bay leaves. We added some rosemary and some thyme and a little bit more pepper. And this is all to personal taste, no particular measurements. When I grew up to cook, my dad never really taught me with specific measurements. He just said throw it in until it starts to taste good and uh, that's what I've kind of gone with growing up. So <laughs> just add the spices to your own personal flavor. Um, always nothing else, go a teaspoon at a time and uh, see what kind of flavors meld together that you like and adjust from there. <laughs> Alright, so this is going to go to a low simmer like I said, it's starting to drop down now and that's about right as you see it. We're going to put the lid on it and we're going to forget about it for a couple hours. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, our, it's been two hours since um, we put the lid on the pot and everything, and the meat is just ready to come off the bone. As you can see, it's pork tender. It's ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll take this and uh, remove this portion onto a cutting board, or I'm actually going to move it to my uh, large cast iron skillet just because it uh, won't let the juices run everywhere. And I'll go ahead and shred it. We'll add it to the overall soup, and um, it'll be ready to serve. Uh, I'm considering taking some rice and putting it in there to make it a little bit heartier. If you like a thicker soup, because this is pretty liquidy, it's pretty thin, broth-like, you can take um, some flour or cornstarch and put it in there to thicken it up. Uh, it's all personal flavor, personal taste, and what you like. After the, uh, I took the meat off and I shredded it and everything, there you have it. And there's about, um, 
I don't know, maybe a pound of meat right there. That's going to, it's really, really juicy and soft. Um, it's, it's tender, you know what I mean? So that's going to get thrown into the pot. And like I said, that's, that's pretty much the soup. Um, I'll probably thicken it up just a little bit with either a little bit of flour with a little bit of cornstarch, uh, just because I tend to like a little bit thicker soup. And I will probably throw in a little bit of rice in there as well. Now I have a family of five, that groundhog that uh, I killed, and it I took the four legs and we ate that for dinner last night. And uh, this soup is going to feed my family of five for at least one more night, probably two. So there you have it. If you are ever thinking about um, eating groundhog, it's a good option for you. It's, uh, it's a very mild game meat. It tastes a lot like rabbit. And... You know, it's just people have a adverse feeling towards groundhog for whatever reason. I don't know it's because they live in the ground or what have you, but it's good to eat. And I suggest that you give it a shot, especially if you have one that's terrorizing your garden or whatever. Uh, have someone capture it if you live in the city or something and take it out somewhere, dispatch it, and go at it. It's a good experience, especially with kids and everything, uh, teaching others how to live on the land and live with what they got. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, please let me know. Thank you very much. Please like the video if you liked it. Please subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones and take care.